right, so the last thing I wanted to show here in chapter 10 actually has nothing to do with the pen tool or paths or anything. It's just a way to bring out more detail in your photography. And this goes back to more than a few years ago when um, HDR photography became really popular. High dynamic range photography. That's the way to take photos of different exposures and then blend all the exposures together. So you get the brightest brights, the purest detail and color, the darkest shadows, things that you couldn't all capture in one shot. And there used to be a program called Photomatics, which you would be able to process your HDR, but that was a program that cost money and people are cheap. They didn't want to spend the money on that for doing just a little part of their Photoshop experience. So Photoshop, Adobe, they added a faux or a fake HDR processing, which gets pretty close. It's pretty cool, but it's definitely not true HDR, but you can get a, a look of HDR pretty close to what others can get. So I'm going to show you HDR toning. I'm going to go to file and open right up here. I'll come down to Photoshop and chapter 10 demos, HDR toning. And I have this one plaza shot of a statue over in uh, a plaza in Europe. Okay. My brother-in-law took this. I was like, wow, that looked like the coldest, dreariest day. Just your colors look dull. Not that I told him this, but I'm just thinking, wow, the colors are dull. Um, there's a lot of detail that we're just not seeing in this photo. It's not the greatest photo. Okay, the unfortunate part is I have to do HDR on the original photo. So I would probably save a copy of this file before I did this. But in this case, we're just going to do a demo anyway. You'll save this file as HDR. But you can't make a copy. Okay, just to prove that, if I hit Command J like I typically would, I can go to image menu, adjustments, HDR toning, and it's immediately going to say, cool, can we flatten your document? Well, if you say no, it's just going to ignore you. Then it's not going to do it. So I go to image adjustments, HDR toning, and apparently, yes, you can flatten my image. And then you get the HDR dialog box here. Okay, so just to show you this, this is broken down into four sections. Typically, you're going to see the top three usually turned on. So you can turn on these little arrows. You have the edge glow affecting the tone and the detail in the photo and advanced features like affecting your shadows, your highlights, the saturation of the color, toning and curve is to really fine tune the process. So I'll go ahead and open all four. And what you do on this is you start at the top. There are presets for HDR. Okay, so I'm gonna run through those quick just to show you visually what they do. City Twilight is like taking a photo right before sunset and it's gonna add more light to it. Well, if you already have a nice daytime shot, more light is just gonna burn out details and ruin your photo. Flat makes your colors really dull. Here's before, there's flat, just made it a little duller and a little darker. Anything that says monochromatic means black and white. So you can do artistic monochromatic, which looks kind of cool, like a solarized kind of look. High contrast adds a lot of highlights. Low contrast, you lose a lot of your contrast. It's just kind of a dull gray or your typical monochromatic black and white photo. A little more white than black. Um, more saturated color. So if you took an image on an overcast day, the colors are kind of dull. You can kind of add more color to it. Um, photorealistic. So again, here's before if I turn off the preview, here's after. You have high contrast, low contrast or just photorealistic, which is pretty close to the original photo. It's just making it a little darker. You also have something called RC5. That adds a lot of highlights. It's kind of like the city twilight. I don't really see much excitement here. 
you have saturated, which is half of what more saturated is. So if this saturated your colors by 100, this would do it by 50, let's say. So punch up the colors a little bit. The one that gets closest to traditional HDR is Scott 5. So I'm going to activate that one. Okay, and what I get is a ton of extra surface detail pulled back into this image. Here's before and there's after. Okay, so now that I've started with this preset of Scott 5, I'm going to look at fine-tuning the adjustments. So I have a radius setting. What I would suggest is you look at this number before you start messing with it. Because if you screw it up, you can at least dial the number back in. So 176. So if I drag to the left, you can see what that's doing to some of the values there. Drag to the right. And you can see what that's doing to the values. I'm getting a little washed out detail in the window. So I might drag it back toward the left a little bit. Right there. Drag the strength, it's at 0.46, so I don't want to go too far because then you're going to lose a bunch of detail. But I do want to pull it over a little bit, something like that. And then I can adjust this a little further over, give me a little bit more detail right in there. Okay, you got to fine tune this. Now I have tone and detail. So again, Look at the numbers before you mess with them. If you're not sure, just move a slider around, but you can always reset it. So it's 0.75. So gamma to the left makes my photo brighter. To the right makes it a little darker. And I kind of like that, a little darker, giving everything a more solid look. Um, exposure does just what it says. To the left, you get darker. To the right, you get brighter. So I want to find a good balanced tone right there. And detail. Keep it at the dial on the right. Detail means pull all the detail back into the photo. If I pull it to the left, you lose all the detail. HDR is about bringing out detail in your photography. Okay, then if I hit Command and Plus, I'm going to zoom in on this statue right here. And you could see these shadows down at the bottom of her tail are almost solid black. But if I pull the shadow to the right, I will reveal more detail, more scales. Notice the awnings over here. If I pull this to the right, I can lighten them up a little bit, pull my highlights over. Now I can light those up so they don't look so dingy and dirty. I've got a lot more detail in this statue that I've retrieved. Look at all the detail in the pedestal, all the scratch surfaces on that rock. If I turn off preview, this is what my brother-in-law saw. That looks so dull and dry and flat. Look at that. Look at all the highlights in the water, okay? It's not there. But HDR brings out all that great detail. Even the cobblestone streets. That's before and after. So I love HDR. I'm going to hit Command and Minus. Got a nice solarized kind of look to this. And now that I've messed around with these, I can adjust my vibrance a little bit. Bring out a little bit more color. Notice you have vibrance and saturation. This is kind of like saturated and more saturated. Vibrance is subtle. Saturation is really strong. So notice if I pulled it way over, then it just looks like candy. So I'll bring that back to where it was, about 26. Vibrance is minor adjustments. And I think that looks better. I can hit P for preview. There's before. Look at all the dull surfaces of the buildings. Hit P for preview. There's all these great little etch details. All the little tiles in the roofs here. That's bringing out a ton of detail in the windows. Uh, and now I can fine tune this if I need to. Okay, That's just by bending this line. So what this curve is reading 
is these are the values in your photo across the bottom from the darkest to the lightest. And this is what's going to happen to those values when you change the curve. So if I have a darker color and I drag this up, it's going to get lighter and lighter and lighter like this. Eh, that's pretty subtle. I don't have a lot of those values, apparently. Uh, let's drag this one up. There we go. So now I'm getting more of a washed out look. We'll drag those midtones back down. You can really see it in the shape of the sculpture here because she's a lot of gray. So I might want to pull that up a little bit. Let's see what the brights are doing. There we go. See if I take these brights and I pull them down, they're going to get darker. So we'll take the brights and pull them down. Take the brights and lighten them by pulling them back up. I might fine tune that right there. And then I can go back and fine tune these sliders now according to this bent curve. So I might take my radius here, just pull that a little more to the right. Take the strength back down a little bit. There we go. And I like that result. Here's before and there's after. That's what HDR is all about maximizing the amount of color, the amount of surface detail, things that you typically would not see in real life. This is artificial, yes, but it makes a really cool photo effect, especially when you have photos with a lot of detail in them. Great, great uh, way to bring out tons of extra detail that the human eye typically would not see in your imagery. So save this one as last name, first name, HDR, and we'll continue with other demos in, well, in the next time I see you. How's that? So this should kind of wrap things up for Photoshop, and uh, I'll talk to you next time.